Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving projectile motion where objects are launched at an angle. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says, during a free kick, Andy Robertson, Liverpool's prodigy, kicks a football at 25 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So here he is, kicking the ball at 25 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to to the horizontal. Part A says find the horizontal component of the velocity. Well to find the horizontal component remember we can use the cosine of the angle so we've got uh equals 25 cos 30 which equals 21.7 meters per second. So we're just using the subscript of h to mean horizontal here and part b says to find the vertical component of the velocity. So remember to find this vertical component we can use sine. So we've got for the vertical component uv equals 25 sine 30 which equals 12.5 meters per second. And here we're just using a subscript V to mean vertical. Part C says how far along the pitch does the ball travel? So that's the range of the ball or the horizontal distance travelled and if we look back at the picture we can see we've got a full projectile there and we want to find this horizontal distance, this range here. Remember from the theory video that just like for projectiles launched horizontally we need to treat the horizontal and vertical motion of the ball separately here. So to find the total time of flight we first need to calculate the time to reach the maximum height. So we're going to start by considering the vertical motion of the ball. So writing down so that we don't know the displacement vertically, we know that u is 12.5 meters per second because that was uv, the vertical component of the initial velocity which we calculated in part a. The final vertical velocity v is 0 meters per second because the ball will come to a stop eventually. The acceleration due to gravity a is minus 9.8 meters per second squared and we're using the negative here, defining upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative. And lastly the time is what we're trying to find. So we're going to put a star next to that one and we therefore want to choose an equation of motion which does not have s in it. So writing down v equals u plus at, we can substitute in the numbers to get 0 equals 12.5 plus minus 9.8 times t and adding this over to the other side we get 9.8 t equals 12.5 and dividing both sides by 9.8 gives us t equals 1.3 seconds. Now note that this is the time to reach maximum height. So we should be able to realise that the ball will take the same time to travel upwards as it does downwards. So we can therefore write the total time of flight as 2 times 1.3 seconds, which gives us 2.6 seconds. So now that we've got the total time of flight for the vertical motion, we know that that's going to be the same for the horizontal motion as well. So now we've got a time to add into our information for the horizontal motion. So for the horizontal motion, writing down SUVAT, we've got S equals question mark, that's what we're trying to find. We know that u is 21.7 meters per second, remember that was the initial horizontal component of the velocity that we calculated in part a. v is unknown, a is 0 meters per second squared for a horizontal motion, remember that's always the case, and lastly the time is 2.6 seconds which we just worked out. So putting a star next to s because that's what we're trying to find, we then need to choose an equation of motion that does not have v in it, so writing down s equals ut plus a half at squared, we can substitute in our numbers to get 21.7 times 2.6 plus a half times 0 times 2.6 squared and as always this term disappears so putting this bit into your calculator gives us 56.4 meters. Question 2 says that Legolas fires an arrow at 70 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to hit an orc. Part A says to calculate the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity. For the horizontal component remember we use cosine so we've got uh equals 70 cos 40 which equals 53.6 meters per second. For the vertical component remember we use sine so we've got uv equals 70 sine 40 which equals 45.0 meters per second. Both answers rounded to one decimal place. Part B says to calculate the time for the arrow to reach maximum height. Well remember at maximum height our final vertical velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. So we can use the vertical motion here and do SUVAT. So we don't know what the vertical height S is. We know that U is 45.0 meters per second. That was our initial vertical velocity from part A there. V is 0 meters per second when the arrow reaches maximum height. A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared if we assume upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative. And lastly, the time is what we're trying to find. So putting a star next to that one, we then need to choose an equation of motion that does not have S in it. So writing down V equals U plus AT, we can substitute in our numbers to get 0 equals 45.0 plus minus 9.8 times T. Adding this term over to the left hand side now gives us 9.8 T equals 45.0 and dividing both sides by 9.8 gives us t equals 4.6 seconds. 
Part C then says to calculate the maximum height. So again, we're going to use a vertical motion and we're going to use SUVAT. So we're trying to find what S is. We know that U is 45.0 meters per second, just like before. V is 0 meters per second at maximum height. A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared and time is 4.6 seconds which we've just worked out. So putting a star next to S here because that's what we're trying to find, we can then use an equation of motion which has S in it. So we're going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 45 times 4.6 plus a half times minus 9.8 times 4.6 squared and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 103 meters. Part D says to calculate the total time of flight. Well, remember what we calculated in part B was 4.6 seconds, and that was the time to reach the maximum height. So we need to realize that the second half of the projectile's motion is going to be identical, but just in the opposite direction. So the projectile is going to take the same time to fall as it does to get up to its maximum height. So we can say that the total time of flight is equal to two times 4.6, which equals 9.2 seconds. Lastly, part E says to calculate the range of the arrow. So remember that is the horizontal distance traveled by the arrow. So we're going to use the horizontal motion here and we're going to use SUVAT. So we're trying to find what S is. We know the initial horizontal velocity is 53.6 meters per second. We calculated that in part A. We don't know what V is. We know that A is always zero meters per second squared for the horizontal motion for the projectile and the time is 9.2 seconds for the total time of flight. So putting a star next to S because that's what we're trying to find, we then need to choose an equation of motion that does not have V in it. So we can write down S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Substituting in our numbers, we get 53.6 times 9.2 plus a half times zero times 9.2 squared. Again, this term just disappears because we've got the times by zero. And so putting this into your calculator, we get 493 meters. Lastly, question three says that a young Phil the Power Tailor stands 2.6 meters from a dartboard, the center of which is in line with his dart. He throws the dart and scores a bullseye. If the time of flight was 0.2 seconds, calculate the angle to the horizontal at which the dart entered the dartboard. We've got a horizontal range of 2.6 meters and we need to realize that this dart is following projectile motion, even though the curve doesn't look that steep. So we've got this full projectile motion here, so we need to take into account the fact that the dart is launched at an angle. This question will involve working out quite a few parts. So first we need to find the horizontal and vertical components of the dart's initial velocity, just like we've done in questions one and two, as that's going to help us later on. But because we don't know what the initial velocity is that the dart's been launched at, we need to work out what U is for the horizontal and vertical components by other means. So we can use SUVAT to do that. So for the horizontal component, first of all, using SUVAT, we know that S is 2.6 meters horizontally. We don't know what U is. We also don't know what V is. A is zero meters per second squared for the horizontal acceleration and the time is 0.2 seconds, which we're told in the question. So putting a star next to U here because that's what we want, we can then choose an equation of motion that does not have V in it. So we've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Substituting in the numbers now, we get 2.6 equals 0.2 U plus a half times 0 times 0.2 squared. So this term disappears and we get 0.2 U equals 2.6. So dividing both sides by 0.2, we get U equals 13 meters per second. So that is U subscript H in a sense, this horizontal component of the initial velocity. For the vertical component, we can make things easier by going to the maximum height, the midpoint. Writing down so that we don't know what S is, we don't know what U is because that's what we're trying to find. We know that V is zero meters per second vertically. A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared because again, we're assuming upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative. And time is 0.1 seconds to get to the midpoint. So that's half the total time, which was 0.2 seconds. So putting a star next to U here, and then writing down an equation which does not have S in it, we've got V equals U plus AT. Substituting in the numbers, we get zero equals U plus minus 9.8 times 0.1. Adding this over to the other side, we'll get a positive value, so we get U equals one meters per second. Now, because we're trying to work out the angle that the dart makes with the dartboard, we need to work out what the resultant velocity is using the two velocity vectors, the horizontal and vertical components. So we can sketch this first of all to help us understand what's going on. So if this is the resultant velocity U of the dart to begin with, we now know the two components. So we know the horizontal component UH is 13 meters per second and the vertical component UV is one meter per second. So now what we need to do is add these vectors nose to tail. So doing that, we've got our horizontal component, which we can label as A at 13 meters per second, 
and then we've got our vertical component which we can label B at 1 meter per second. And drawing our resultant vector, we've got the two arrows on it there to show it's the resultant vector and make it different to the other two. And we can call that magnitude C, which is unknown. So if we're trying to find the magnitude of that vector, we can just use Pythagoras. So we get C squared equals A squared plus B squared equals 13 squared plus 1 squared, which equals 170. And to get C on its own, we square root both sides to get C equals root 170, which equals 13 meters per second. So notice that the 1 hasn't really affected the 13 value here in the square root. And then to get the direction, we can label a few angles in our triangle. So we've got the right angle there, and then the angle theta is in there, because that angle there is next to the starting point here. So we then got tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, which equals the opposite, which is there, divided by the adjacent, which is there. So we get 1 over 13 which equals 0.077. And to get theta on its own, we need to do inverse tan or shift tan in your calculator, which is tan to the minus one of 0.077, which should give you an answer of 4.4 degrees. Now, one last step is to identify that since the angle that the dart makes with the dartboard will be the same as the angle to the horizontal when thrown, then the angle theta must be 4.4 degrees. And we said that was always going to be the case in the theory video. When you've got a projectile being launched at a certain angle, it's going to make that same angle with the horizontal when it lands. That's all from me folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.